Hi guys, and um, welcome back to another Sonic Academy Tech Tip. In this one, we're going to show you how to widen out your vocals in QBS 5. And you can also do this in any version of QBS. They've all got the same controls to do it. And basically, uh, what we're going to show you is by taking a, a mono vocal that is just very much in the center of your mix, and if you want to widen it out, you can also apply this sort of effect onto different instruments. Um, that you just want to move about the field, you want to make them surround uh, the listener. And we're going to begin by taking a simple mono vocal here. I'm just going to play it back so you can hear it on its own. So you can hear there, it's very much in the middle of the mix. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is I'm going to duplicate this channel out. And I'm going to make another duplicated version. And I'm going to keep this top one just for reference. So I'm going to mute it. So this is these are the two versions that we're going to make use of here. So to begin with, we're going to take uh, the first version. And we're going to go to the inspector on the left here. And we're going to pan it fully over to the left. And then we're going to go to our second version. And we're going to pan this one fully over to the right. And then if we click on the first version, going to right click and we're going to scroll down to process and we're going to go to pitch shift. Now let's move this up and what we're going to do is go down to the pitch shift settings here and go to the fine tune and we're going to put in minus 12. Just going to pitch this down just slightly and for the pitch shift mode you want to keep it on uh, this MPEX4 algorithm and uh, the quality uh, because it's just a single vocal we can just keep it on solo. If there's more than one thing happening, if it's quite a complicated sample, you're gonna you're gonna want to put it onto the poly mode. But we're gonna put it on solo and musical because it's a, a mono vocal on its own, and I say it's a vocal, so you want to keep it on the musical mode. And then we're just gonna hit process. Let's ask us if we want to make a new version or if we want to apply this effect onto all three versions that we've got here, and we want to make a new version. And then if we click on our second copy, we're going to do the same thing. I'm going to go down to process, hit shift, and instead of having it at minus 12, we're going to put it to plus 12. And again, we're going to keep it on the solo musical mode. We're going to hit process, and again, we want to create another new version. Okay, so I'm just going to create a folder track for both of these by right-clicking and adding a folder track. And it's going to drop them in there so that we can quickly reference between the uh, original mono and the, the new stereo version that we've created. So here's the mono version on its own. And then the stereo, the new stereo version. Okay, so you can hear there, it's, it's actually, it sounds more like a chorus at the minute. And um, that's basically um, what we've done by creating that sort of pitch shift up and pitch shift down. And it's just to further widen this out, if we go down to um, one of the versions that we've got here, I'm just going to go down to the second one. Um, on the left hand side here, we've got this delay control. And I'm going to set this to 25 milliseconds. And this is going to just offset this sample by 25 milliseconds. And it'll widen it out even further for us. And our newly created stereo version. So you can hear there it's quite a bit wider. Sounds a lot better than the um the mono version on its own and it'll be good for uh, choruses. Okay, so another, I'm just going to delete this track for now, and I'm just going to show you a, a quick way to do this um, without the pitch shifting and keeping everything on the one channel as well. Um, so if you've got this single mono version, if we just go into the left and click on our inserts on this channel, and if we just click um, into our effects and go to delay, and we're going to, we're going to put on a, a stereo delay.
And if we just move this up, um, we can turn the sync mode off on both of these. And if we turn the feedback down to zero, again on both, and we're going to turn off both of the filters, and we're going to turn the mix up to 100 on both. And then the pan control, we want this one panned hard left, and we want this one panned fully to the right, so minus 100 and 100. And this delay control on the left one, we're going to put it as small as we can, so not 0.1. And again, the delay on the right one, we're going to set it to 25. So it's effectively doing the same thing, but it's keeping it in the one track for us. So if we play this back now, we should get the similar effect. That's a and that's it with it on. And from here, you can also put in, yeah, for example, a high pass filter if you wanted to cut out uh, the bottom end, um, which is quite useful for vocals. Okay, so I hope this tech tip helps you out, and I'll see you again in the next tutorial.